Good morning, folks. It's about 10 o'clock on our first snow day, Friday, January 22nd. And the first thing I wanted to do is go over the scapula review page with you. Um, I'm just going to go over these answers out loud. So I'm in, intending that you have completed this worksheet already. So let's take a look at this first view right here. I hope you figured out that this is an anterior view. Uh, and this is going to be the superior side inferior at the bottom. We know lateral is over here on this side because of the glenoid fossa, which is right there. And then this would be the medial side, so that'll be uh, sufficient enough to complete the compass there. So let me just run through these labels with you. This will be the superior border. Over here is the acromion process, followed by the coracoid process. The glenoid fossa, sometimes you'll hear glenoid cavity. This fossa will be the subscapular fossa, and you can remember that because there's no spine on this side of the scapula, so this has to be the subscapular fossa. Next we have the lateral border, followed by the medial border, and the inferior angle. Let's go ahead and move to the next one. I'm going to bypass that one and move all the way down to the bottom. This is a posterior view, and I know that because I'm seeing the spine right here. So posterior and in terms of our compass, again this will be the superior end, inferior down at the bottom. Look for the glenoid fossa to find the lateral borders or the lateral side. So this will be lateral on this side and medial over here. And as we run through the labels, I'm going to start here with the spine. And you can follow the spine up, 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 and it turns into the acromion process. Now remember this is a flat image. So the acromion process doesn't look like much, but in class, remember, we used the models and it had that pretty significant angle change, not quite a 90 degree, but somewhere in the vicinity of that. And that acromion process and the coracoid process, which is right here, will both point anteriorly. Acromion process meets the clavicle, which is on the anterior side of your body. Coracoid process is for muscle attachment. So here's the acromion process, coracoid process. I'm going to move down to this one. That's the glenoid fossa. That's always lateral. That's the socket where your humerus will fit into, form your shoulder joint. This fossa here will be the infraspinous fossa. Okay, below the scapular spine, infraspinous and fossa is a shallow depression. Lateral border on this one, medial border here. This one's pointing at the inferior angle, all the way up and around. This would be the supraspinous fossa, and we end with the spine again. The final um, image is a lateral view, and I know because I'm looking right into that glenoid fossa. So remember I said earlier, both the acromion process and the coracoid process have to point anteriorly. So this is the anterior side of the bone. This is the posterior side, superior at the top, inferior at the bottom. So let's run through these labels. Acromion process right here. You can see that angle change. This would be the spine, but we're looking right into it, so it doesn't look like much. Coracoid process, glenoid fossa. This border will be the lateral border, since it's a lateral view, and the inferior angle. Final question, are these images of a right scapula or a left scapula? For me personally, um, I like to look at the posterior view because it makes the most sense to me in terms of viewing. And if this is the glenoid, the glenoid fossa where your humerus would be, imagine a humerus hanging here. And we're looking at the back of someone, so that's going to have to be a left. And it turns out all three of these images are left. So we're starting with an anterior view of the left, the arm would be hanging here. We turn it 90 degrees to a lateral view of the left, and we turn it 90 degrees again to a posterior view of the left. All right. Next video will be on the anatomy of the humerus.